Okay, good morning, everybody. Sorry for the technical problems. I will uh, speak uh, today about uh, the uh, origin of a branch of geology now called Earth and Planetary Sciences, which is geochemistry, which uh, known uh, exponential development in recent years. Much work has been devoted to the origin of uh, geochemistry with the identification of a father, Victor Moritz Goldschmidt, born in 1888, and the grandfather, Vladimir Ivanovich Vernatsky, born about 20 years earlier, 1863, even if both did die approximately at the same date. Okay, Victor Maurice Goldschmidt is considered as a founder of geochemistry in the Western world, illustrated by the success of the Goldschmidt conferences, the most important meetings in earth sciences, which drain every year alternatively in Europe and the US thousands of scientists. But Verdasky, gave the first definition of geochemistry in 1910 and the also it must be forgotten that the work of Goldschmidt has been to some extent inspired by Vernatsky both Vernatsky uh, Goldschmidt paid frequent visit to Vernatsky and had with him a long correspondence the purpose of uh, this talk is to show the role of French scientists in the elaboration of the work of Verdasky, and also to some extent regret that this name became almost ignored in the Western world after World War II, just to be found again in more recent time. Okay, the life of Bernard of Goldschmidt is very well known. He does not deserve a long comment, you know. He, he was born in Zurich uh, and first just, uh, in fact, adopted by his father because his uh, real father is not known. Is uh, among all prob probability, it was Victor Mayer. A brilliant physicist who committed suicide just after the birth of the young uh, Victor. And this may be the reason of the initial of Goldschmidt VM, you know, Victor Moritz. Then the family emigrated to Oslo, where uh, Victor Moritz did his studies. They had a thesis on southern Norway and published in 1923 is a series of papers on the distribution of elements which published in the proceeding of the Norwegian Academy of Science which is really considered as the founder some of the founder writing for geochemistry then he was professor in Göttingen for, for, for some time, had to leave Göttingen because of the Nazi problem, came back to Norway, had again to, uh, to, to, to flee to uh, Sweden, then to uh, England, where he died finally almost broken. And uh, it's only very close after he's dead, his death that uh, his book with a name geochemistry did appear published in now i will i will say more detail on the vladimir ivanovich vernatsky born in st petersburg uh, son of a wealthy ukrainian family we after the study at the university of st petersburg uh, make a grand a grand tour in Europe to take to to get material for uh, thesis in St. Petersburg. 
he first went to Italy, but uh, the, by by Saki in Napoli, but uh, the Saki at this time was <coughs> too old. Then he stayed for some time by Paul Groth in München, in Munich, uh, where he studied for the student of uh, crystal, uh, the instrument of crystallography, but he did not, did not like very much the atmosphere, the rigid atmosphere in Munich, and asked Paul Groth to uh, make an invitation for him by Ferdinand Fouquet in uh, Paris. So here is the letter. Here is uh, the, 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 to the right, you, you have the letter by which Ferdinand Fouquet answered to the, to the uh, uh, express his invitation to Paul van Groot. The life in Paris, you find the life in Paris was the, very successful. And uh, Ferdinand Fouquet was a very nice, a gentleman, you know, who had, who, who was the pioneer in um, uh, <coughs> petrographical microscope. He has uh, in his lab a very familiar atmosphere with uh, one of his assistants, Alfred Lacroix, who should become the follower of uh, Fouquet as the master of microscopic petrography. And uh, he had another assistant who was his own daughter. And the daughter of Fouquet fell in love with Lacroix and both get married. It was a very happy marriage. And Ferdinand Fouquet gave only the, permi the permission, the grant granted only the permission to the marriage to the marriage to Lacroix, Lacroix when he had completed his thesis. But then you know this. So here is uh, to the left uh, Ferdinand Fouquet in the, and in the center uh, Lacroix. To the right, the very nice book on microscopic petrography, which was published by Fouquet and Michel Levy. Uh, <clears throat> Vernatsky was given the work to study the aluminum silicate, and especially not only with the microscope, but also to make the synthesis of the silimanite, which at this time has never been succeeded. Synthesis, mineral synthesis at this time was done at the Ecole des Mines. And in the lab headed by Henri Le Chatelier, a known physicist, which precisely at this time was translated in French, the work of the American Jude, which really is the theoretical basis for geochemistry. Here I show a uh, lab to the right, a uh, lab, uh, <clears throat> a room, study room at the Ecole des Mines, and to the left, a sketch of uh, Henri Le Chatelier made by the student of the Ecole des Mines, who at the occasion of what they call the Petite Revue, you know, the student has the right one uh, year to make a show in which they are free to see ex uh, anything that they want on their professor. And here they represent Le Chatelier as a kind of a very strict, severe man, and also uh, above the first edition of a phonograph, you know, which is probably a way to show that uh, as a teacher, Le Chatelier did repeat his lecture every all the same year after year. But still, he had a very good influence on the on uh, uh, the the young uh, <coughs> Bernaski, who really succeeded in a very short time to make the thesis of silimanite 
he wrote uh, in his diary that uh, we did it in eight days. It was very easy. And uh, he not only he succeeded for making the silimanite, but also he defined, he found the three polymorphic variety of aluminium silicate, you know, silimanite, andalusite, and kyanite, still today a uh, very strong basis for uh, the interpretation of metamorphic petrology. Back in, back in, back in Russia, Pernatsky used the work done in Paris and to uh, some extent also to mention to obtain two doctorates, one in petrology in uh, 90, the other six years later on crystallography, then he became an established authority in Russia. He was uh, well introduced uh, in the Russian society, but he was a Democrat fighting the autocratic regime of the Tsar and later of the Bolshevik revolution. For example, he resigned uh, from the university in 1912 to protest against the student rep repression. And uh, so he was always in uh, danger to have some political problem in, uh, Russia, in Russia. This is escape by making frequent travel. First of all, in Ukraine, because his family was originate from Kiev in Ukraine, and he considered consider himself as an Ukrainian before being a Russian, something which has some <laughs> implication also today, you know. And, but also he paid a frequent visit to France and especially to the Museum d'Histoire Naturelle to uh, Lacroix, who after the Collège de France has got the position of professor at the museum. When after, 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 after the discovery of uh, radioactivity, both, uh, Vernadsky as well as Goldschmidt became very interested in radioactive minerals. For example, during his stays in Paris, he paid a visit to the lab of uh, Madame Curie. He even once did consider to establish permanently in France and uh, apply with Lacroix to establish in the museum a lab for an institute for the study of radioactive minerals, but uh, his proposal was turned on by the French authority because he was not a French citizen. So he went back to Russia and established his uh, institute in Moscow instead. instead. But also the uh, contact that he has as well as the political problem that he had in Russia led to a second stay in Paris between 1922 and 1925. So the, in the stay, the second stay in Paris, what at the invitation of uh, the <coughs> Of, of the, uh, the director of the Sorbonne to give a series of lectures uh, at the Sorbonne. This he did, and it is really at this occasion that uh, he created his, and is introduced for the first time the name of a geochemistry. He had already presented a sketch of what should be geochemistry in a Congress in Moscow in 1912, but very briefly, but is really during his stay in Paris, in Paris that is conceived his geochemistry. He, he stayed in Paris by, in the lab of Alfred Lacroix. Here to the right, you have an image of 
the museum at this time, you know, with the lacroix with the big bath standing in the in the back. And uh, it happened that uh, at this time, the museum was a kind of a nest for Russian and East countries geologists. After the revolution, a number of Russian students emigrated to France. For example, is my own school in Nancy. When you see the names of the students in the years 2030, about half of the people, be half of the students have Russian names, you know. And in Lacroix, in Lacroix Lab, you had a number of uh, very known, very good uh, Russian petrologists, especially to the left, uh, Madame Jeremine, who was really the assistant of uh, Lacroix, who really was very severe. I have known this because I happened to have met Madame Jeremine very, very early in the, the end of my study. Lacroix was dead. But uh, Madame Jeremine was a kind of the standing memory memory of uh, the museum. And the lecture at the Sorbonne led to a publication of a book, you know, La Géochimie, which is the first time when La Géochimie appeared on a real scientific publication in which uh, Vernaski sketch the outline and give the rule, rule of his own geochemistry, which as we will see is significantly, significantly different from the geochemistry by Goldschmidt, which was written by Vernaski directly in French with the proof corrected by Eugène Lacroix. And at the issue of these lectures, Le Vernaski was elected as a corresponding member of the French Academy of Science. And here to the right, you have the small letter by which Lacroix informed Vernaski of his election is something which still today is a kind of a tradition, is uh, the Academy of Science. I have experience that is the same in the Academy of Science in the Netherlands where, and uh, this is that after an, ele an election, somebody, a good friend of uh, the candidate uh, is asked to write him a small note to warn him in advance that he has been elected, mainly to avoid that eventually he refuses the election, which would, of course, would be considered as a great offense for the academy. It happens sometimes in France, but mostly for mathematicians. So now, now it's uh, just uh, time to see very briefly to compare the main lines of geochemistry according to Goldschmidt or Vernadsky. For Goldschmidt, minerals and rocks, you know, and the earth in general, is only a source of valuable substances. The role of man is to extract them in the most efficient way and say, hoping that uh, the heart is uh, big enough to restore by himself and provide all what men need. For Vernaski, in the contrary, who has been first educated as a pedologist, he was very, very, he made a, a big accent on the role of life. For him, life was a geological force able to transform the earth in an irreversible way. And so he was the first scientist to suggest that human activity was able 
to impress, to, to, uh, to exert irreversible action on the Earth system. Is in this, uh, in this respect, it can really be considered as the founder of what is now called ecology. And it's a bit uh, said that the message of Vernadsky has been practically ignored in many years, you know, not only in his own country, in Eastern countries, you know, where the, where the authorities were mostly interested in getting as much useful substances as possible, but also in the Western world, as yet we will see, as we will we will see the name of Vernaski was completely forgotten after the <clears throat> after the the second world war but then it's uh, just good to say that uh, the geochemistry played a major role in the atomic in the development of uh, atom you know, at the end of their life, both Goldschmidt and Venetsky were mostly were very interested in radioactive minerals, bore in a practical and in a theoretical way. And they played a significant role in the race toward the atomic bomb in their respective countries. And the, for instance, it's uh, Goldschmidt in Norway who had managed that the uh, reserve of the heavy water will be sold to the French. After the secret attached to these studies have partly, partly explained the very different fate of both names after the war. Immense popularity of Goldschmidt among complete oblivion for forgetting for, Vatsky, for Vernaski, except with a few exceptions, except for a few scientists, which uh, for either more concerned with philosophy that with natural natural sciences, uh, and also the uh, and also in France, which you see. Uh, after after the war, at the time where you had an explosive development of uh, geochemistry due to an identical instrument, you know, mass spectrometry, micro electron microprobe, many of them de being developed during the war, you know, but also the, uh, and so it has resulted or resulted in the immense popularity for Vernaski. And again, the name of Vernaski was almost forgot, forgotten in France, with a few exceptions. And in the sheer coincidence, then one of the mark exceptions in France was a group of uh, Michel Fonteil at the Ecole des Mines in uh, Saint Etienne, who did very interesting studies on the on the petrology of a scan, and it's a sheer coincidence. Then a major member of this team, Bernard Bernardi, was precisely the president speaker in this meeting. You know, and so the situation changed gradually at the beginning of the 21st century with the collapse of the Soviet Union and environmental problem. And just it's just about time to discover Vernadsky again. And I think it would be very interesting for everybody to read again La, Ge La Geochimie and other work. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jacques, for this interesting contribution to Vernadsky. I have to say that is not completely true that uh, everyone uh, 
uh, forgotten Vernaschi. I know a school of uh, fluid geochemistry in Italy that have a Vernaschi in oh, yeah. even <laughs> oh, the, oh, the geochemical people. Uh, no, no, no. The it, book is uh, no, no, no. Is, it, it's it's very true, and also, but you see, the problem is that uh, you had, especially in France, you had a new generation of yeah. geochemists that everybody knows, you know, who became, who took over the political power, you know, become yeah. even minister and so on. <laughs> and I must say that these uh, did completely forgot the name of Vernaski, but mm -hmm. it's good. It's true. Yeah. It's. Uh, uh, you always have some people who were also knowing him. Knowing yes, him. and yeah. appreciate very much. And so if there are uh, some questions about this, we have a few minutes. I'm Michiko Yajima, came from Japan, and uh, I, it was very... A small comment that your picture of laboratory of La Croix, mm -hmm. there is a person who has glasses and white gown. Yeah. Maybe he is baby Takahashi Junichi from Japan. Chem chemistry, uh, he, is a chem uh, he learned chemistry in Japan and went to France to, to, to study geochemistry yeah. under the Bernatsky. So he uh, came back to Japan. And so he started geochemistry in Japan. Okay. So yeah. uh, comparing with Western countries uh, in Japan, the geochemistry starts very early. It's a comment. Okay, okay. No, it's 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 interesting in this uh, respect. You know, I was I was mentioning the role of uh, Michel Fontaine, and uh, Michel Fontaine did his studies in Japan, you know, on the SCARN there, that it became a custom with uh, the SCARN and all this field of it, uh, uh, deriving from Vernaski. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Can I? Uh, thank you very much for putting forward the name of Vernaski, who is indeed a very important scientist. I think uh, one of the books you, you didn't mention is Biosphere, La Biosphere, and he invented this concept, which is so important. Sorry, I did say it again. Le concept de biosphere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, biosphere. He wrote a book uh, in Russian first in 26, uh, Biosphere, and, and then it was translated into English, into French in 29. And, and today, this is one of the major concept in, in ecology. Um, and uh, there is a French connection to that. Of course, uh, Seuss was one of the people who initially thought about this concept. But in France, there was Teilhard de Chardin and uh, Edouard Leroy, the philosopher who was also at the Collège de France, who, was, who were uh, beginning to speak about the notion of biosphere. And I wanted to, to know if you could, if you have clues about the relationships between these two people. No, and... no, I, I have many, but this would take hours, you know. And no, I think that it's true that uh, La Biosphere was published immediately after La Geochimie, you know, and was published in English. But, uh, and then, you know, when, when he was in, uh, Vernadsky was in Paris during his second stay, he met a lot of uh, what I would call philosopher, you know, Philo, uh, uh, Teilhard de Chardin and all this. And he has, this has led to a whole branch of uh, which uh, was illustrated by uh, Gaia and uh, John Lovelace, which is very important, you know, but slightly divert from the mainstream of geochemistry as thought by the French geochemists, you know. So it was, no, it was very important. I have one colleague in Holland, you know, Peter Westbrook and also Jan van Hinter, who really are defending, still have published, are defending this line. It was really the uh, scientific approach of what is now ecology. And it would have been a great progress if their work and their thinking had been more 
largely taken in consideration. Yeah. It was re-translated re and republished in France in 96, I think, with a big preface by Deleage. Yeah. And and since then, I think the name is much more yeah. famous. Yeah. Yeah. Just a small question. Uh, what is the status of Goldsmith in Russia now? What? What is the status of Goldsmith in Russia from the other side? Yeah. Oh, the, no, no, no. It's, uh, you know, yeah, I think it's, it's very interesting what uh, happens uh, in uh, Russia, you know, because after the collapse of the Soviet Union, you had a whole generation of young Russian scientists who had who have emigrated practically in to some extent colonize major universities in the world you know i could name i could cite name in australia in switzerland in america the best example is sobolev you know who is one of the major figure of uh, the earth sciences yes, in know, yeah. not in moscow but in novosibirsk it was more easy yeah. to have more freedom in novosibirsk and in moscow and sobolev has three sons you know all very brilliant geochemist one is professor in grenoble and also in the vernadsky institute in moscow the second is professor in Potsdam, you know, in the GFZ, the major institute in Germany. And the third one is a head of the geochemical department is Novosibirsk. So you see they have for, for their brightest student assimilated absolutely both approaches. But those who stay, remained in Russia, did they pay any attention to Goldschmidt or was, I know Vernadsky... Well, you know, know, you know in, in Russia, they think that Lomonosov has invented everything, you know, which <laughs> means that they really think that uh, Vernadsky was the, not only the grandfather, but the father, you know? uh -huh. but uh, they recognize, of course, the influence of Goldschmidt. Okay, yeah. thank you. Well, thank you for your talk and uh, for telling us uh, what happened in the School of Mines of Saint Etienne, far from, from Paris. Well, but I have a question about Korzynski. Is there any, any link be between Verdansky and Korzynski? Because Korzynski is also a famous uh, uh, Russian geologist. Yeah, yeah, Korzynski is a genius. You know, Korzynski is a genius. He is a direct follower of. Uh, uh, Vernadsky, um, and yes, but the problem with uh, Korzynski was the same problem with Jude. It's something that I have prepared my talk, but uh, I skip in the last minute because I thought to be uh, over time that uh, the geochemistry was uh, it was necessary for established geochemistry to uh, assimilate the world by Gibbs, by Gibbs, you know, by Jean Gibbs. Uh, on, on the phase rule. And um, the problem with Gibbs is that uh, he writes in a very, very difficult way, you know, which means that impossible for a young scientist to assimilate his concept if it is not helped by somebody, you know. And uh, so for Vernaski, he was Le Chatelier, you know, and uh, for Goldschmidt, he was his, his father, you know, and is a little bit the same of uh, Korzynski, you know, I had the chance to meet uh, Korzynski at a couple of occasions, you know, he came to visit us in Nancy uh, many years ago. He was a very nice man by which uh, you could discuss with him. And when he was discussing, it was very clear. And, but when he wrote, it was extremely difficult to understand. And it has taken years, it's still now that uh, we start to realize the importance of uh, Korzynski for metasomatic processes, you know, where Goldschmidt, of course, is the geochemistry of magmatic processes. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Just stop me because otherwise I will be there <laughs> <still> tomorrow. <laughs>